Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And yes, I have my paper lunch bags out. So I found one lone craft colored paper bag and I still have quite a few of these white ones. And I, I know I have some more of these somewhere, but anyway, we are gonna make a mini junk journal using a paper lunch bag and then I am challenging myself. I have not made a prototype, so don't get frustrated, hopefully, <laughs> with me. But we are, I'm gonna use my scraps and then just anything that's within arm's reach. If I have to get up from my chair in my craft room to get it, we don't get to use it. So that's the challenge for me today. Now, saying that, I'm gonna use the brown one. Saying that, I have a lot of things I can reach. I have a huge scrap bin and lots of ribbons and extras and stickers and all kinds of stuff, washi tapes. So we, we should be fine. We should have lots to play with, but this is gonna be more of a, not just using like one paper kit or something kind of style. So let me, I realized after I started this series, lunch, paper lunch bags do come in lots of different sizes. Who knew? I didn't. I always said, this is just kind of the regular lunch bag size. Mine, you, you can use any size you have. Don't feel like you have to buy the one I have. Mine measures 10 and 3 quarter inches by, it literally is right at 5 inches. Now, these are not perfect. Um, lunch bags don't, I don't know, they just don't fold up perfectly. But the way I'm going to do mine is this piece, this is the bottom of the bag. I'm going to fold that over. I did think through this just a little bit. And I'm gonna fold it over again. And then this fun little flap here is going to become, I think it's going to become like a closure. So it'll open like that and like this. And then I think we're gonna put a signature in somewhere. Now the other option, what would be the other option? Is I guess we could have it open this way. That would be fun too. So I'm gonna have to decide here in just a second. I am trying to sort of line it up a little bit, but I'm not gonna to worry too, too much about it. Get it folded and creased. Cause we're gonna layer papers. Like I said, I'm gonna use my scraps and make this look fun regardless. Let's have the opening go like that and it open. And then probably the signature. Does that make sense to have the signature there? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that makes sense to have the signature there or to put the signature here. We'll see when we get to that point, but we're going to just put like a scrappy pad kind of signature in there. Okay, so I am going to, I'm not getting up, I'm just turning around because like I said, I have what I know a lot of people would not call scraps of just a bunch of digitals I printed and then I have a huge scrap bin my husband was in here the other day and he was like, what is that? And it's, it's kind of bloomed. <laughs> I'm going to call it blooming because I have jammed so much stuff in here. I don't need that. That I've got to start using it or I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do something because I don't have much more room. So this should help, right? This project, I thought about pulling some pieces out before we started the video. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna do it in real time. This was me playing with some chipboard, trying to come up with some kind of uh, a journal, with, and then I never went back to it. So th these are definitely a bunch of scraps. Look, there's a whole piece of paper that somehow ended up in the scrap bin. I've got book page. I have Christmas. I have my from my one of my butterfly kits. I have lots of different designers where I've punched out circles. It's hard for me to throw anything away. And then I thought, even though this came off of a little watercolor journal I had. I thought that was pretty. I don't know. It's just plain white paper. That might be good for the signature. Well, I think this is from one of my paper kits. Oh, I'll have my favorite. Um, I always have them there for you. My favorite Etsy 
uh, digital kits. And then of course you can always look at mine too, what I have available. I don't have as many as some of the big designers, but I definitely, um, you can see the papers that I have bought and like and those types of things. Okay, I don't even know if all of this even matches or somewhat goes together, so we're just gonna have to kind of play as we go. I do want to think about the cover, which is gonna be this panel right here and this flap. I would like those to at least sort of coordinate and maybe the back. They don't have to be the same, but I'd like them to look pretty and happy together. Some more of those flower cards. So, I've got a pretty large piece of this. Now, I think this, this is me testing my memory, guys. I think this is from a Pink Monarch kit, um, which would not surprise me because I have a lot of their papers because they're one of my favorites. Okay, this flap, if I have a piece of paper an inch wide, it's gonna layer right in there really nicely. And I know my ruler is an inch wide. So I'm just gonna tear a strip that I can then get to the correct length to fit on my little lunch bag. So, again, and I told you this was like right all, just a smidge. It's, it's really is five inches. It's almost exactly true, five inches. Okay, so that's five by one inches. Yours will depend on your little, the size of your lunch bag. Now, by using this flap, we've lost the opportunity to maybe have a pocket right there, but I'm okay with that. I might, we might end up slicing this off and putting a pocket here here at the, the back end. We'll see, we'll see how that works. All right, so if I have an inch here, it would be nice to have an inch on this side of the flap as well. And then maybe a piece that is uh, maybe three by five, a little less than three. Let's go ahead and get that three by five piece because I do know, one, two, three, I'm gonna make it just a little smaller than three inches. I do know that I want, like I said, at least the front to match. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I'm gonna come up just a smidge. So this is really like two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And it's going to lay right in there. So this is the kind of um, journaling, junk journaling, creating, where you just really get to have fun and let it all come together. Let's get one more one-inch strip for the inside of our flap. I want it to be the same height as this one. And then we're going to do some inking and we're going to start gluing this together. And I think pretty quick you'll see how it comes together and what we're going to do. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. So I had told you guys that I may not get videos out every day this week, which it's looking that way. But right now, if I can get this one done, I will let it go on up tomorrow. Today is Monday. I finished two journals I've been working on for a while that I'm gonna have at my craft show. And I got those finished and tagged. My husband actually had a doctor's appointment that I went with him today to and we stopped I needed another like display shelf so we picked that up and so I didn't have as much crafting time but I thought you know I have time I have time for a quick video so we'll see I don't know how quick it's gonna be but I wanted I wanted to craft some with you guys today okay I'm gonna go ahead and just glue up this end of my bag I think it's a little narrow for a tuck spot and I would like all of this, I'm not gonna use a ton of glue, but I would like all of this to stick together nicely. I'm not gonna worry about that extra glue because I'm getting ready to lay this piece right on top there. 
just glue that down. I am using my Line Co brand PVA glue in the little dispenser bottles. If you want to see some of the supplies I use, uh, pop over to my Amazon storefront. This is my everyday glue, Line Co brand PVA. You can buy different sizes, and if you want, you can put them in the little dispenser bottles like I do. If you're in the market or you need some glue, that's the glue that, like I said, I pretty much use every day. And I, I also use glue sticks on occasion. I My favorite glue stick is the Yoohoo glue stick. <laughs> and I use art glitter glue, which is super popular. I also have some of that barely art glue, which is very, in my, I think it's very similar to art glitter glue. I really like it too. So there's different price points, different choices. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to get a particular glue um, shipped to you. So you try and find out what you like. There are other creators that I watch on YouTube that use different things. So, you know, we're all different in what we like to use. So find what works best for you. There we go. Yeah, I think that's cute. And I can decorate the front some more later if I want to. And I will probably put some type of closure on here, whether we just do a loose ribbon or we, we add a ribbon closure. Since I have enough, I do, of this paper. Look at me using up almost a whole whole larger scrap. I'm pretty, pretty jazzed about that. We'll just put this on the back. So this is going to make our journal look quite cohesive right here out of the box. <laughs> we'll see what happens on the inside because I don't have any more of this paper. Well, this is similar, I think from the same kit and I have a bunch of these. Now, I'm making this video in November. Of course, YouTube, you can watch videos, uh, older videos, you know, videos that have been around. So you might be watching this in the future and it's not almost Christmas time. But here it's November and I've been doing a lot of Christmas crafts. I love Christmas crafts. And I intentionally pulled scraps from my scrap bin where I haven't been shoving my Christmas scraps just to have something a little different for people that aren't in the mood, um, that, that either don't celebrate Christmas, aren't in the mood for Christmas, or just want to do something different. But I would be remiss if I didn't say, use your Christmas papers if you want to. <laughs> you could. This would be a great little gift for Christmas. Okay, I want to play with this. I'm trying to figure out with all this folding here, the bottom. If I slice off the end of this bag, let's see what's going to happen. Let me do mine. Don't do yours yet because I can fix this if I have to. But let's just see what happens. I know it's going to open it up, but what I'm not sure is what's gonna happen like with all these funky, funky layers. And I think, I think it's gonna be okay. It might be, I, I definitely will end up, we'll, we'll layer this. Let me just go ahead and glue these little flappies down so they don't distract me. Okay, and then I think if I glue these little pieces right here, just so that when you go to put something in the pocket, we don't end up accidentally tearing the paper bag or end up in the wrong section. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, there's also this part of the flap that's the bottom of the bag, but I don't think that's gonna really be too distracting. One thing I can try to do is I can tear or cut a piece of cardstock and just layer it in here and glue it down and then I know like it's things won't get caught on. What I'm worried is when I go to put like journaling cards it'll get caught on that and not be very pleasant. Maybe I'll use some of this book page just to line the inside of that pocket. Let's try that. So I'm just using my little journal so I don't have to measure and to tear my paper to approximately the correct size. Let's see if that will fit in there. 
wanted it to be a nice line, like a liner. Okay. And then when you look in, you'll see a little bit of book page. But if I then add some glue in here, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not worrying too much that it's perfect because once it's glued down here towards the front, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to come out. And I tore mine just a touch right there. But this is also where it's almost big enough for a tuck spot. I'm going to glue it together so that it's nice and sturdy. And then I may end up wrapping a little piece of like washi tape around the edges here. But let's just get all the glue in first. Now this piece I'm leaving because we'll add, maybe make that into a tuck spot or another little page. Haven't decided yet. This is the joy of you guys watching me make up my mind as I go. Okay, so this is still free, this piece. All right. I think it's much sturdier. I have the full access to the pocket and I don't have to worry about it getting caught on all these little layers and pieces of paper. This is gonna end up covered. But let's just get it down for now. These bags have so many little pieces. Okay. Let's think about, before I worry about wrapping something around here, I'm gonna think about what I'm going to layer on there, what paper. So let's think about that. I haven't decided on this side yet, so we can, we can pick a paper out for right here. So I'm trying to see if I have another like larger piece. Goodness, that was like a template thing. Haven't seen that in a long time. Some of these are some really old scraps, which isn't a bad thing. All right, we definitely have some good book page. Let me just turn around and grab us another chunk and see if we come up with some more. I'm gonna kind of keep this to the top. Ooh, there's a piece. It's larger. That's what I was going for. Oh, I think this is from that kit. This is fun. Here's some scrapbook paper. Goodness, so I have everything from little tiny things <laughs> to quite large pieces. I was kind of thinking, just going a completely different direction and not worry. So maybe some orange polka dots or some pink gingham. <laughs> All right. Oh, and depending on then what kind of pockets and different things we add to it, it it's going to it's gonna all come together. Let's do the pink gingham. Why not? Because we can. Ooh, that's like almost exactly the right height. So let's tear it that way. Now, of course, in all of this chaos, the ruler, the ruler was hiding. I'm going to tear this just so that it's straight. I said it's almost the right height. So I'm just using the little gingham pattern to try and help me get a little sliver off of there. Ah, now it's gonna fit. It's a little bit smaller than maybe what I would have torn if I'd been being a little more careful, but that's okay. It's gonna fit in here and I'm gonna bring it to the top because I'm most likely gonna put some kind of pocket down here. And you won't even know that it was a touch short. So do some inking. I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Ink to ink my edges. So leave me a comment. Tell me if you guys uh, like this type of crafting where you just kind of create with the scraps and the things you have or do you like really well um, organized projects and it's okay to say you like both because I like both but if you have a very strong preference or there's a you know a certain way you like to craft let me know or when you watch videos what you like to see All right now this pocket's really feeling good 
And again, let's go ahead, let's just go ahead and get a pocket on here. That one's a little narrow, but I definitely like that green and there's some fun numbers there. Let me find a piece that we can have a pocket that's a little bit deeper. Voila. Like even some of these kinds of strips. There we go. Let's just do it. And again, I'm going not worrying yet too much about my colors, my patterns, because we'll come back and make everything look really cute and pretty here in a little bit. Let's do it that way. So I'm just going to add glue to the three sides. And this is like a pretty narrow page this way. So something skinny will have to go in there. Tall and skinny. Cute. Now, to make sure we have this pocket where it's not ripped, we have a couple of options. Washi tape. We can use masking tape, which I did have to stand up, but it was with an arm's reach. Let's use a piece of my crazy old masking tape. It's nice and super sticky, even though the roll has seen better days. Okay, I'm just getting a small piece. I don't really even care if you see it on the pocket there. Let's do it this way. Just a tiny bit will come up, but I still think it's gonna be enough to really reinforce. Still opens up all the way, but we got it. Now, because I kinda like the masking tape look, <laughs> I'm now thinking that I may do a few little pieces. Now these, this side's, it's gonna end up covered up because I haven't layered the paper yet. But we'll just have a little bit of masking tape there and maybe we'll do this side. It hasn't torn, but why not, right? Why not? Just to kind of mirror what's going on, we'll do a nice little piece right there and one beside it. And I think it's gonna kind of give a little fun element to our page. I don't know about you guys, do you, I like the way masking tape feels. Do you? I don't know why, but I do. Okay, we have, a, we have a lovely, very sturdy reinforced pocket. Okay, so when we open it up, we see this. We gotta decide what we wanna put here. Do we want another pink gingham? Why not? Because I'm just trying at this point, <laughs> we're gonna kind of move on through. It looks like it needs to be about right there. We'll see how I did. Yeah, it fits. So this is how I avoid a lot of measuring when I'm doing this type of journal. And now sometimes I give you guys very precise measurements like when we're doing our one page wonders and you're gonna wanna make the paper fit and work the way that I did. But on this project, a lot of it, kind of like that torn edge the best. Of course, it will definitely depend on the size of your paper bag, but it will also, you know, depend on how, how you folded yours, if you decided to leave this cute little closure. Oops, let's go move it again kind of up. So you can just use your, your, your journal to help you decide where to tear your papers and start layering on. Okay, so here's the question. Do we want to make another page, like another flip out page, or do we wanna make this a tuck spot? I think because I'm gonna be adding pockets on some of the different panels, let's make it a little flippy out. Why not? Because we can, right? All right, this is some paper that looks like faux, faux wood. And maybe we'll make it a flip out pocket, just again, because we can. So I'm gonna take off, looks like about a quarter of an inch. I'm just, again, I'm eyeballing here to get this to be almost the same height. There we go. And I think I'm gonna use both of these pieces. So let me just cut this one to the same height. 
All right, so let me tell you what I have here. I have two pieces. It's a single-sided scrapbook paper from my big mess, my big pile here. It is four inches by that four and seven eighths. And I'm thinking I want both. Now what's gonna happen is the journal creases here. So I've got to think through this for just a minute. If I add a little page here, it like if I were to do some kind of pocket like this, it still has to fold in to here. So the hinge, we can use this just like a hinge. Cover it with the faux wood. Let's do that. Okay, so all I did was I'm just again using the journal to help me know where this needs to be scored and I'm folding it over so this piece is going to get glued right back here like that we're going to glue that down and then we'll layer this piece on so let's just go ahead and do that I'm going to lay it right here and we are going to glue it down so I'm gonna add the adhesive actually to the bag, and I do not want this to come off, so I'm gonna be a little more generous with the glue than I've been when I'm just trying to just kind of hold the, the bag closed a little bit. This one, I don't want it to come off. It's gonna be a cute little some something when I'm done with it. Don't know what yet. Okay, this one, If, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Let me think about it for a second. I'm thinking I'm gonna cover this panel and then we'll do something like right up next to it here, okay? So the question is, do I want the wood, the wood panel? I think I do. I'm gonna use this to layer here and we'll put something else on this panel. All right, so I don't really need where I creased that one. I'm going to just cut, tear. I'm gonna tear this to the width that I need to cover what was the bottom of the lunch bag, right there. And I'm gonna just glue it in. And even though it's brown, I'm gonna go ahead and ink around the edges. It's, a, again, a white core paper. And sometimes that bright white there kind of bothers me. And we'll layer or make a pocket out of this. And I'm thinking because my other pockets are side load, the, the other big pocket right here is a side load. We may make this one a top, I'm not sure. Okay, I don't think it really mattered, but for some reason I was wanting this part of the wood, the faux wood, the panel right here to be on the left. Okay. So this is my little flippy page. Let's see how it's doing when we close it up. Okay. It's all still folding up fairly good. It's getting chunky. I knew this was going to be a chunky one. Now with this kind of weird thing I've built, I'm not sure. We, again, I think we're going to put the signature here and I still think it will fold up. Okay. I think it's going to work. All right. This one, whoops, that's pulling up. I'm playing with it too much. I haven't let it stick down well yet. All right, this is this pocket. What do we want to do here? I'm thinking something thin. So I'm thinking I'm going to just grab some of these pieces of dictionary page because it's super thin and I'm going to layer them on and then we'll think about what type of pocket or tuck spot we want to do on this little extra page. And I am not going to worry about direction. 
that piece I laid down with the text going the correct direction, but I'm just gonna start laying these together on here. I'm gonna have that little bird show. And I don't want it to get collaged over right now. It may still get covered up depending on the type of pocket we put on here. But for now, that little birdie will be okay. I'm gonna tear this just a little bit to have a little bit different edge. It'll still cover up enough. So at different times that I've been crafting, when my scraps, my extras end up overwhelming me, I've had some different friends that I've sent a box of, my husband's like, you're seriously mailing a box of garbage. And I said, well, you know, one man's garbage is another man's treasure, right? So I probably need to reach out and see if any anybody needs a bag of scraps. Postage is so crazy now. I, again, it's just so hard to mail anything. I did a, a little package for my daughter recently and I'm like, wow, the postage was more expensive than what I was sending her. And the same, I offer free shipping in my Etsy shop if people spend, you know, more than $35, which is great, right? I, I want to offer it. But somebody spent, you know, right at that $35 and what they purchased cost me $9 to ship. Right now, the post office here in the States anyway has a extra charge during the holiday season and I'm like, wow. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think how much I want this to kind of go this way or do I just want it to be like this I'm now just not sure I like how that flips so maybe it's just this extra page right here what do you guys think I know you can't maybe we could glue this down as a pocket like just a really narrow tuck spot no idea what I'm gonna put in there but I'm gonna do it the scrapbook paper has gotten this so thick and again, it was already multiple layers of the lunch bag paper. And I'm just not happy with how it's feeling. So I'm going to lay mine down. You could leave yours to kind of flip around if you want to. But I now have this little extra page. And I'm okay with that. And I think it's going to fold up better this way too. All right, I've got one more panel here. And then we're going to add some more pockets. So, I kept that out because I like it. Let me move the trimmer out of the way. How about, you know, just because we have brown, pink, blue, let's go with some orange. I'm going to add some orange. So, again, I know it's hard to see, but I can see where my little journal folds to get that paper torn. And I need to then just tear a tiny sliver off of one end. There we go. It fits in there. This is going to be quite eclectic. <laughs> but again, I feel like when I get it, I get little labels and maybe we'll add some words or do something fun, it's gonna hopefully come together. And this is the other thing, you know, when you're recording videos like this. I've never, like, gotten all the way through a, a whole project like this and been like, nah, I'm not going to put it up there. But that's always an option, so I don't worry too much. I'm like, you know, if I don't want to share it, I don't have to. So I don't even have to worry because if that's the case, you guys are never going to see this. And if it turns out okay, then I'll be like, sure, I'll share that with the YouTube universe. Okay, I have one pocket here. I have this side pocket here. We definitely need something on these pages and here and here. And again, I'm still thinking I may sew, sew a signature, like grab just some of these papers and fold them up. 
But before we do that, we'll keep going. How about, how about on this one we do like a little belly band, like just a slide through for something small. I think that would work. So I'm gonna just tear it off. It was a little long. There, now it fits nicely. I just like that paper. I'm guessing this is a Pink Monarch print too. Not sure. All right. There we go. Very cute. Get a little bit of that really thin white core torn off. All right. Yeah. And then I might add something to it to decorate the front of the belly band in a few minutes. All right. Just using what we have to make something fun. All right. What do we want here? I have, I, I saw this the very beginning when I first started and I really was like, ooh, that's beautiful. No idea where it's from, but it's pretty. Hmm. One's kind of skinny. What would look good? How about, ooh, I've got an idea. I don't want to cover the bird up all the way, so how about if we do, and I'll put something on the back of that, but how about we just glue this down so it's a little tuck spot and it holds this paper on and then the other one will just stay a flip up. So I'm gonna add glue to the top of the page here along this side and then along what will be, you know, the bottom of this piece, leaving this side open. Okay, and then it take, took up some of that kind of wood. And then on this side now, it's a flip and I didn't lose my bird. This was creased before and it would probably be a little bit happier, thicker, if I just layer a little bit of cardstock on it, just make it a little sturdier. So I am going to, again, I'm not gonna worry about it being absolutely perfect, <clears throat> but I'm gonna just glue this down and that's gonna help that piece not wanna bend where I had creased it and we won't have that white showing either. All right. So again, I think this is gonna be a fun little journal where most of the journaling space will probably be in whatever, like little cards or tags or things I ultimately put in it. I haven't really left, I might, I may try to find some neutral paper. In fact, we could write on this paper right here because it's very neutral, even though it has a little bit of a pattern and some color, it's muted. So this could be like a little writing spot for whoever's using this little journal. And I keep losing. The other thing I keep losing in all of this mess is my bone folders. <laughs> ah, here's one. <laughs> oh, gosh. There we go. Cute. I really like that paper. All right. It's getting a little chunky, and because I'm adding so many layers, I'm not sure we're going to be able or I'm going to want to put a little signature in it. We'll see. And that's what I was kind of saying. Without the signature, there's not going to be a lot of writing space. Maybe we'll put a panel of something neutral right there. And I may have to piece it together <laughs> with some little pieces and see how that works. This is a cute little journaling card. I'm kind of po poking through. Ooh, here's some good good book page that has lots of space to write. Okay, so we're going to move these. I liked the color of these, but I think I can do a, 
couple of strips of this and we'll have a good a good writing spot okay that's what I'm gonna do so again I'm just going to see where I need to tear it there's one strip I think I may leave that little bit that little piece there this it could actually even be the top corner and we'll do this piece here. And then I just need a little piece right here. Get it all patched together, making Franken paper. And we'll get it pieced together. Now, this is where I may decide to use my masking tape again because it'll bring that element forward. We won't see a lot of it the way I'm gonna do it, but we'll see it a little bit. All right, I think what I want is this piece on top. And I want it layered about like that. So that's pretty close. So let's just grab our tape. This is gonna hold it together nicely. Before I glue it down, there we go. And then this piece, has a little bit of writing, which is kind of fun. Let's just let the writing be there. Obviously, there's still plenty of room to write, and it gives it a little bit of character, I think. And again, use whatever papers or scraps you have. A piece of coffee dyed paper would be nice, tea dyed paper. Just again, you could do a piece of notebook paper, <laughs> you know, whatever you have access to. Now, this little piece, because I taped it on the other side, all I have to do is glue that down if I want to. But I think I'm going to intention intentionally, whoa, because you can write over masking tape most of the time. I am going to do skinny little pieces. I don't even mind seeing that, you know, the seams and that I had to, stick this paper all together. I think it kind of gives it a little bit of character. If you don't like this look, that's fine. Just use a piece of paper. When I tell you guys I save all my scraps and I use them, I'm not kidding, I do. I like to use them. I didn't get this overlapped very well. So I'm gonna put an extra layer there and a little piece here. All right. It looks like an upside down cross. So I wonder if I want to put it this way. I'm going to put it this way, even though the words are upside down. I just think it looks better. Okay. And that's the other joy of paper crafting. You can change your mind. <laughs> you can do different things. And we can add something to the front of this if we decide to a little, a little label or a number or something to pretty it up. All right, and I just covered up the wood, but now I do have a little bit of writing space. That's popping up a lot just because of the thickness, but I think it'll get used to laying down. All right, we've got a little tuck spot here. I want some kind of pocket or something here. Well, how about, you know, I haven't done like a a triangle pocket. I did like that paper there, but let's see if we can find something and just do like a little corner, corner pocket. I like that paper too. Ah, that was kind of some of the neutral paper. Like that would have been perfect for a journaling spot. Kind of goes with the blues. Ooh, okay, there we go. We already have one. All ready to go. And I'm just going to chop off this part of the triangle and I'm going to chop a little bit up at the top too. There we go. I just made us a pocket. I love using all these scraps. One of the things that when I do this is I'm like yay I use scraps and then I look at all the scraps I still have to use. Oh it was on the back of this but you know what a little bit of progress is better than no progress. There we go. 
Now I didn't have to put glue right here, but I did. So that's gonna limit the size of whatever we put in there, but very cute. All right, let me see how long we've been going. We are already at almost 45 minutes. What I may do is make a part two. So when we come back for part two, <laughs> we will make some fun tags and ephemera to put in these little tuck spots and maybe decorate a touch more and do some kind of closure for our journal. I'm going to skip sewing a signature in, but you definitely could sew in a signature. I may change my mind by part two, we'll see. Cause I could do like a small one that only has a few papers and that might be cute, but it definitely is gonna soon be chunkier than this little spine is gonna be able to handle in the closure. So that probably is gonna make that decision for us. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you choose to make one with me and um, let me know. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks you guys for watching and I hope everyone's having a great day.